What's going on, guys? Mark with Limo Marketer here, and you probably won't guess who it is, but I've got Ken Lucci back uh, because we just get so much great <laughs> feedback every video I do with you, Ken. Thanks so much for coming back. Uh, Mark, let me tell you, as I said to you, this is the highlight of my day because I'm not looking at financial statements. I'm not writing valuation reports, and I'm not dealing with buyers and sellers. It's a good, listen, I'm happy. I never thought we would be as busy as we are, but it's not the least stressful thing I've done. It tends to be emotional for the seller, right? Yeah. And it might even be a little educational process for both the buyer and the seller. Um, yeah. So these are great. And I, I kind of, uh, I kind of, I enjoyed, I enjoy these videos and I hope they add value to the audience. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we've been getting, comments, you know, e emails, you know, and uh, yeah, very positive Good. things they're saying. Good. And so, yeah, we were talking like, hey, this is working out great. You know, what should what should we do next? And the last two videos, they, they were formal, right? It was kind of more like a, a, a webinar training. Sure. And we got to talking and we're like, well, hey, you know, these people should hear your background, your how you started, how you gained all this knowledge. And I thought that was your idea. And I thought it was a fantastic idea. And so, well, yeah, would love to hear about it. So it's, it's uh, so my background, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 15. I started my first uh, security company when I was 15, sold that one when I was 25, stayed in the residential security business until I was uh, 31 years old. And then I got into the medical alarm business. You know, I've fallen and I can't get up. And yeah. um, built and sold that company. Uh, it built it up, had 130 distributor offices, kind of like franchises, and sold yeah. it in 2005. Somewhere around 2003, I bought my own limousine. And because I was a young guy in Florida, and I tended to go out a lot, and uh, so I had my own drive in my head, my own personal limousine. So, um, it, and if you speak to the average limo guy, they'll confess to you that they're a closet car guy. And no, no, I've noticed on Facebook, right. you just see all these guys. Yeah. Everyone loves posting. Yep. Their new, you know, I added a yep. new child to the to the to the family, essentially, right? Yep. Um, and the the when I got. I decided to get into the business. Um, I had a relationship with the Steinbrenner family that owns the New York Yankees. I did a lot of security consulting for them. <clears throat> and when I sold my medical alarm company in 2005, I announced that I was going to retire. I was 41 years old. That would date me. And I was going to retire. And I remember Mr. Steinbrenner saying to me, you know, we don't want you to retire. We'd like you to figure out what you want to do to stay close to us. I said, I don't want to be a Yankees employee. I come from Boston. That's what caused me a lot of trouble. And I said, but I just could, I just would rather be a consultant. So long. Can I story, stop you right there? Like, yeah. I'm sorry. You were actually talking with Steinbrenner. You actually were on that level with him. And I was on retainer with the Steinbrenner family from 1999 through 2005 to do security and risk assessment. And so my, my background in the security space was um, I ran a company down in Tampa, a very large security company, and, and Mr. Steinbrenner was a client. And that's how I met him. That's wild. 19, like 1997, 98, 99. And when I told him I was going to leave the security business that I was working in, the, the family hired me on an annual retainer basis to handle any kind of security or risk issues. And as their children evolved, after I secured their houses and after I hired security guards and I hired off-duty police officers as needed, and anytime they had events, we were we were on scene. Um, I started having to drive the kids. So I, I in 2005, after I retired, I started doing um, limousine work for them. I leased SUVs for spring training. And I worked primarily for Mr. Hank Steinbrenner, who was George's son. And then I did a little work for Mr. Hal Steinbrenner, who is now the managing general partner. But the boss was always a, uh, a presence. There's no question about it. So when I decided I was going to retire, because I did that all during the medical alarm business, because it was never a full-time job. Okay. 
he talked me into getting into the limousine business. He didn't talk me into it. He said he saw what I was doing with with the kids and driving everywhere. And he joked with me that you should own a limousine service. So um, I started uh, the limousine company, Ambassador Limousine, in July of 2007. And we started with a uh, stretched Cadillac limousine, stretch and and uh, the first thing I bought was a 16 passenger Escalade. And then I bought a couple of Cadillac Escalades. And from the beginning, the company was founded based on the idea of superior branding, differentiation. And if my competition was buying a Lincoln, I was buying a Cadillac. Smart. Uh, we branded our vehicles. Our vehicles were branded like a presidential limousine. It wasn't gaudy, but we had a small emblem that was on the sail panel of the rear sedan. It was that little window that in every sedan that doesn't open. And yeah. then we would put it in the corners in the rear of every SUV and, of course, the license plates. When we get bigger, we branded everything. And we were not set up as when I started the company to do affiliate work. I was more into ex becoming the biggest well-known brand. So can, can I pause for just one second? Because you said something really interesting that I want to make sure everyone heard. Yep. Uh, you said differentiating yourself. What I see in this industry, and I think it's many times why a lot of my clients struggle is it's all the same, right? Monkey see, monkey do. And it's really trying to figure out, okay, just like you said, if my competitor's buying a Lincoln, I'm buying a Cadillac, right? What is underrepresented in your market? And I don't want to get you too off track here, but that's a really great insight. Um, and I have a client who's a Nashville stretch limo company, and he's got all these very unique stretch limos that yep. are designed like unique colors. And mm -hmm. th then you're not competing with everyone just on price, right? You're you're competing on something else. And so correct, really and, great insight. And differentiation is just is not just the vehicle. I yeah, mean, I want sure. you to imagine something. We were in Tampa Bay, and all of my chauffeurs were in black suits and gold ties, 365 days a year. It you in our training manual, you could not be out of that uniform if there was a client in the area, or if you were on property at a hotel. And now, in the heart of the summertime, we would go to a summer uniform. And that was their option. But most of them stayed with what we called the black and gold. So when I started the company, it was based on differentiation. And in order to, I, I when I started, I literally drove the first 50 weddings myself and wrote an outline and a training manual of how to properly do a wedding down to, you know, you introduce yourself to the bride and the bride's parents, because most of the time they're helping to put the bill. Yeah. When you're when you're leaving the reception, as you dropped off the 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 wedding party, you check out with the wedding, the bride and the, the father of the bride and the father of the groom and say, before we leave, is there anything I can get you? So yeah. we I really took it to that kind of a degree. Um, I I wanted to train the staff that we were more in the hospitality business. So yes. then we were. So I went out and I bought this book and this is my original. OK, it has all of my notes in it. It has all my all my scribblings in it. This is from this is the Ritz Carlton, the new gold standard. That's OK, awesome. now this is written by the same guy, Joseph Michelli, that wrote the Starbucks experience. Now, I would suggest everybody reads both of them, this one and the Starbucks experience, because if you think Starbucks sells if their product is coffee, it's it, if you think their product is coffee, you're wrong. OK, they they change the way people buy coffee. They change the customer service experience with all of the different names and all of the different you know beverages that they choose. But ideally, they created a system. So that's what we worked to do. Our system was everything was differentiation. If my if my competitor had a white motor coach, mine was gold. If my competitors were dressed in shorts and a T-shirt or shorts and a Hawaiian shirt, which was everybody in Florida at the time, we went black and gold. We gave people an allowance to buy suits. We would do like bonuses based on that. So we built it based on differentiation, started it in seven. 
we achieved a million dollars in sales within our first 12, full 12 months. So by the time we got to July of, eight, of 08, we were, we did a million dollars worth of sales. In yeah. 20, in 2009, and I'm really dating myself, I bought Julie's Limousine. She was the biggest competitor I had down there. And then I bought a company called All Star. I didn't know that there was a financial crisis. I, we just grew right through it. Yeah. And That's and wild, those, by the way. A million in a first yeah, I track a lot year. of new companies, and I, I don't hear that very often. I remember, at all. <laughs> I remember it distinctly. We had 14 pieces of equipment, and Tom Mazza, who was a consultant from day one for me, yeah. Tom Mazza said to me, you have too much equipment for a million dollars. I'm happy you did a million dollars, but you've got too much equipment. Yeah. What it, and that's when we planned on... In 08, we planned on looking to buy other companies. So we ended up buying Julie's in 9 and b bought All Star in 10. By the time I sold the company, which was in 13, we did, we got to $5 million in sales by 2012. Okay. And it was, if I had to, if I had to break down and try, this is really kind of because it's ancient history at this point. But if I, if I thought about the most important things we did, is we looked at who used chauffeured services and we started marketing to the 25 wealthiest zip codes in the area, the most expensive pieces of real estate in the area. We became friendly with every doctor's office, every lawyer's office, larger doctors, larger lawyers, yeah. and the real estate people that sold the larger properties. Now, there are thousands of realtors, but the top 10% or top 20% sell 80% of the most expensive realtors, real estate. Sure. We became friendly with all of them. We marketed in the wealthiest zip codes. And I took a, a page out of my security days where we created a door hanger. And the door hanger said it's very simple. It had a picture of the back end of an ambassador vehicle with the ambassador logo in the sale panel. And it said, you may be seeing these vehicles in your neighborhood, don't be alarmed. We're just carrying, chances are just carrying one of your neighbors out for the evening or to the airport. And we had a first time use code. And we actually had our chauffeurs pass them out. And based on their initials, they put their initials in front of the use code. And we basically, we would give a, a bonus. To, oh, that's to, great. That's and brilliant. And it worked. Now, like affiliates, uh, like many uh, little affiliates. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then what we would do is if we if we delivered, if you, if Mark Petrie was the user, chances are Mark lived in a neighborhood where there were other people in that same socioeconomic. So while my reservationists were sitting doing nothing, okay, I would we would send postcards out. And we would put the postcards in a gift envelope. So it looked like a birthday card or an invitation. So... It was the principle of direct mail that you just didn't send something that looked like a a, a, a direct mail from. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was an invitation. And we actually had several of them that we tried. We did A-B a testing before I knew what A-B testing was. So we would send a, you know, a note with the ambassador logo saying, look, these are the services that we offer. This is how people use us. Um we would give them certain promotions for setting up an account, meaning putting a putting a a, a credit card on file. Yeah. We gave we gave this is listen to what we gave. We gave ten percent off, ten percent off birthdays, anniversaries, ten per, uh twenty percent off nights out in limousines during the week. Oh, yeah. um, we gave a bunch of stuff that really didn't mean anything. If you look at the grand scheme of things, sure. when you look at cost of lead and cost of sale. But we put in the idea in their head that if you're going out for birthday or anniversary celebration, tell us and we're going to have a bottle of champagne in the back of the vehicle. OK, now we got to the point where the lo the state police came down and said, you can't be charging for champagne. And I said, we're not. We're giving it away. We gave away a bottle of champagne. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't John Perry. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's great. So we promoted in the wealthiest zip codes because only 11% of Americans or consumers at that time routinely use chauffeur transportation, right? Yeah. Then we, we 
so we use the door hangers, we use postcards, and we use gift cards. And and all I said to my reservations and dispatchers is, look, get 10 or 20 of these out in the shift. And they were handwritten, okay, because it's, people don't open stuff with stickers on it. They just don't. Yeah. We visited every business hotel and asked them for – we would approach it like this. You know, we've got a group coming into town. They're asking us to look at several business hotels. Could you please tell me the capacity of the hotel and the and the, the group and meeting space that you that you have? What's the largest group and meeting space? So you could take a 10 minute tour. You could meet the, the meeting planners. You get their business cards. And what did you just do there? That's brilliant. <laughs> That's well, you basically. Right. You basically said I had groups that come into town and one of them is asking me to look around for business hotels. I can't promise anything. I'm just going to put you on our list. Okay? Yeah. So then we would go to any country club or hotel that would host weddings and we would try to get on their preferred list. And we went to every wedding networking group. We I, I remember distinctly making a list of the country clubs and if i would if i wouldn't get married there i've never been married so if i wouldn't get married there we didn't want to go there right yeah yeah because we because you're going to find something if there's a thousand weddings in an area i'm telling you right now the top 10 places sell out like that so yeah i remember doing that i definitely remember also visiting any hotel higher end hotel that had a concierge desk and i would get to know who all the concierge people were at there was actually a concierge association so we would become we became members there we also downloaded the top 100 largest employers and the most successful medical practices and the largest uh, lawyer practices on the largest employers we it, it it's the old thing of cold calling we would go in and we would say you know we'd like to sponsor a morning break and we would like to bring several of our vehicles and show the executive assistants, um, you know, the, what we have for vehicles. Now, I remember distinctly, that's how we close tech data. Tech data, I don't know, they're publicly traded. I think they have 1,800 employees. And I remember doing morning breaks. And then when we became, they became our client, we would do what we called lunch and learns. A sure, lunch no. I've, yeah, I've heard right. of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's we, great. We, we stole the lunch and learn idea from when I was in the medical alarm business because I'm going to tell you that food breaks down all doors. <laughs> yeah, mean, no. You bring food. and Now, the other thing we would do is we would bring a small plant for the receptionist and it had a little ambassador magnet in it. Didn't have a business card. It had a magnet. Right. It had a magnet with the ambassador logo. Arthur Messina made them for me. Yeah. After that, we figured out paper cubes. We delivered paper cubes to the largest employers. And here was the key. In order for you to get the paper cubes, I had to get the business cards of the executive assistants because I put you on a list. And anytime you needed a paper cube, just call the office. We'll bring you a paper cube. So, now, sorry, what's a paper? What's a paper cube? Do you mean like oh, a paper weight? Or no, you said this. She, these these post-it notes. I'm sorry. Post oh, notes. got it. Okay, okay. Ours, ours was a cube, right? It Ooh, was a cube. This big. That's people, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I love it. But, but here's what we did. We went to the largest 100 employers and we would carry in a box of paper cubes and say, listen, you know, uh, my boss asked me to drop the, now meanwhile, I was the owner of the company. My boss asked me to drop these off and I'd like to, can you, I'd like to deliver them to the executive assistants. And by the way, you know, if, if you order tran transportation or travel, you know, please, I'd like your business card. If you need any more paper cubes, just call the office and we'll send a chauffeur down and he'll bring you one. We did that to doctors' offices, the lawyers' offices, and to the largest employers. After I sold the company, the reservation staff till, still said to me, "Ken, these people are calling looking for paper cubes, and the new <laughs> the new the new owner is cheap. He didn't want to do it." Oh man, <laughs> so that's hilarious. They, they ended up picking it back up, but so we did. Yeah, paper I guess cubes. so. Wait, so quick question here: How did you learn? To do all of this, it sounds like you, I'm guessing you're in some sort of business like mastermind group because 
or or is was this just kind of came natural you're like hey how would we you know get into the, this certain group of buyers where do they go where do they i remember i remember reading a book called the little black book of networking okay, okay. and there was another one called the little back black book of prospecting okay, okay. And I'm going to tell you, it's the easiest thing in the world. You know, he, listen, you're driving a Cadillac. You park out front. Everybody's going to pay. You're not, you're not, the, you're point. not, a, you're not a trash man, right? You're in yeah. a black suit with a gold tie. It, it worked. Now, can you get into Johnson & Johnson that way? No, but I'll tell you how you can. Well, we worked, we went to all of the charity galas and charity events. Now, in many areas of the country, in many cities, there is a charity calendar. There's a charity season. There was down in Florida. I've worked in many areas with many clients, and they tell me that there are maybe five or eight or ten major charity events. We actually, it's, our rule was simple. If there were more than 100 participants, we were sponsoring something, okay? And we would sponsor races. We put a Cadillac on the side of the on the side of the road with spring water with the tailgate up. Okay, as long as we could put a sign and as long as our logo was on on the charity event literature. Now you need to understand who who donates to charities? Yeah, Wealthy of people course. and business yeah. people, mm -hmm. bank presidents. I mean, so we went to every single charity event and the rule was this when we started. Okay, we will give only in-kind donations. We'll give a round trip to and from the airport, but it and it has to be. Well, there's restrictions on it. It can't be sure. from Cle Cleveland. It had to be <laughs> right in my market. Yeah. But we gave in-kind donations, and I'll tell you why. First of all, you get all of the advertising and you get all the brand recognition, but seven out of ten times they don't even use it. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I believe it. I believe it. Okay. So after the fact, when we get a larger fleet. We used to take a specialty piece of equipment and we used to give away a night out in a limousine. Now, I'm talking about the Moffitt Cancer Center or some of the larger hospitals, okay? Why? Because every doctor you wanted to do business with was at the charity event, okay? Yeah. So we own the charity circuit, okay? Then it hurt, didn't hurt that I actually also did in-kind transportation for the radio stations and the theaters and the performance theaters, okay? And, you know, I was the owner. I, I remember Billy Joel coming in. I remember driving Billy Joel myself, and we got tickets to the event. We actually sold the, the tickets for that event. I, I, I remember doing being on the radio constantly because we would be doing in-kind in kind uh, radio uh, transportation. I remember John. Uh, Sorry, forgive me. In kind meaning like you, you're trading essentially. Correct. Your, you either give right. them a you either give them a fifty percent discount or you give okay. them full comp. Now, okay. I don't. We we would we would basically do a trade of 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 radio commercials or we would do a trade of a sponsorship. But let me back up. The charity events usually it was very simple. You gave away a round trip to the airport, right? Yeah. Or when we got to be very well known, we would auction off a night in a specialty vehicle and tickets to the lightning game, the hockey t team down there, or tickets to the football game. And the stadium would give me the tickets and it would be a package deal. When you participate in charity events, it, it you get to know all of the movers and shakers. Now, yeah. the other thing I would do is I'd prospect in the local business journal. Okay, I would look at the local business journal or in the business section of the local paper. And, and I would, if there were ever any, uh, you know, higher executive uh, promotions or anything, I would drop a card in the mail or drop a card and basically give the person a one-way trip to the airport, and usually they would buy this, the round trip to try yeah. to open up a business account. So yeah. I remember doing all of that, and I, I would tell you that the paper cubes was a huge, it was a big It was a big deal because you could buy small ones if you want to, and they, yeah. they're worth the investment. Nobody's going to throw you out if you've got a gift. So what works is food, 
And definitely in our case, we love the paper cube idea. Yeah, you get that you know? reciprocity, right? I mean, absolutely. That, that's huge. And just to point out something real quick. Um, so, you know, my one, one question I almost asked was, well, you know, what, what worked the best? But here's the thing. The, the thing to focus on here is how many different things you did, right? Not necessarily because right. you can't say for sure, like, oh, this is going to work the best for everyone, right? You have to try. You have to try. You know, in your business, it's called A-B testing right? I mean, back in the day, we didn't know what the hell that was, but we were trying different postcards. I, I can share with you this, this. If you say, if you drill down and you dissect who uses our services, it's always people that live in the wealthiest houses, in the wealthiest zip codes. Yes. Their kids go to private schools. They're also the largest corporate, their corporate officers from the largest corporations. They're the doctors, the most successful doctors and lawyers. If you figure out what they do and where they go, you'll be successful. And yeah. so I'll give you I'll give you some ideas. Anytime, anytime there was a restaurant opening, we would buy a gift certificate to that restaurant. And this was before Facebook. We had a mailing list based on, you know, people that used our services. And we would say, listen, we're supporting this restaurant that just opened up, it would have to be, I'm not talking about Denny's or I'm talking about a top shelf restaurant. Sure. <laughs> and, and I would get to know the general manager. I said, listen, I, we do this with every restaurant that opens up. Um, I'd like to buy a gift certificate. And, and if certain cases, I would buy a few. And we would do birthday packages with them. We're spotlighting Eddie V's. I read it, remember Eddie V's on Boy Scout. I could probably even remember the manager's name if I tried. And I would say, these, we're supporting this new restaurant. We will be able to get you reservations. And here's our package. Yeah. It's, a, it's a sedan for four hours on the weekends and a gift certificate, or it's a drop off and a pickup package, et cetera. So the key is to look at where your client, your optimum client goes and look at what they do and be visible several times in all of those places okay yeah. now we used to park a, the the a brand new sedan out in front of a, one of those restaurants on a saturday night if we were bringing somebody to that restaurant there's not a valet that would not allow us to put our vehicle right out in front that's the way we did it and that's... keep in mind I mean, we had the sale panel branding that was and 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 i'm going to say it and my competitors will say it we probably had the, the most recognized brand name in the fast period of time. Um, but I, I think in, in general, the idea is for any owner, I don't care if you just have one vehicle, devote, specific, devote several hours of downtime a week to where can I go? What can I do? All right, let's start with where our, our existing clients live. How many companies pick up in a wealthy a wealthy person several times a month take them to the airport but never go back to that neighborhood to do anything else i mean if you if if you're not comfortable prospecting in a neighborhood then then get a zip code list get a list of the uh the residents in that area or at least the house numbers you could buy a mailing list for practically nothing yeah and and because that's I mean, it's kind of likely, right? Guy lives in a big house, a big expensive house. His neighbor's going to use your service as well. By the way, always have an offer. I don't care what it is, some sort of an offer. Okay? So yeah, this is a big one. And I love this one. Uh, I read a really great book recently. I recommend it to everyone. It's, it's huge. It's called $100 million Offers. The guy is really popular. His name's Alex Hermosi. Incredible book. I've read it two or three times. And yep. Yeah, the the offer is key, and um, I love the packaging. That's an offer, right? You packaged up with the restaurant, always car service, and maybe always. you can buy in bulk. You know, I've got a client who does this with wine tours, right? He buys Absolutely. the tickets in bulk, yes. and yes. then he packages it up. That's how you differentiate yourself, right? And um, let me tell you, Mark, when you do those packages, no one is saying to you, "Well, you're ten dollars more an hour than Joe." Joe no exactly package it all i mean you have to if you're not friends 
with every concert venue manager and every single stadium uh, stadium that has professional sports. You don't have to be a sponsor necessarily. You just yeah. need to know how to get tickets. Now, you know, uh, people say, well, you, you know, you, you comped. Yeah, I did. I mean, what do you think casinos do? What do you think? What do you think restaurants do? Did yes. you ever see a manager send over an appetizer? That appetizer, you know what that appetizer probably cost him? It's probably 15 bucks on the menu. Do you know what it probably cost him to make? $4. The impression he made by comping it is the biggest thing in the world. Bartenders exactly. comp all the time. You have to look at what is the possibility of the revenue production and the annual value of a customer I can create when I look at what I'm going to give up, so to speak. Okay. Yes. Now you can put restrictions on everything you do. Okay. We used to do packages, birthday and anniversary packages. During the week, it was one price. During Friday and Saturday night, prime time, it was another price. We were doing dynamic pricing before we knew what dynamic pricing was. But yeah. but some people get pissed if you if their wife, the husband doesn't take them out on the night of their birthday. So they may, you know, so I think you have to look at all of those things. But and also just one one other thing is just the ease. So I, I've listened to a lot of calls of clients who do wine tours and, you know, the call of someone who's kind of inexperienced is, well, where do you want to go? Um, me, I'm not big into like, you know, I've been on maybe one or two wine tours my whole life. I wouldn't know where to go, you know. Right. And so what people are looking for is they want something like that's turnkey, right? They don't want to figure out where to go or, or even where to eat, right? And that's that's where your offer can kind oh, of fill in those blanks, right? It's a, a one stop shop. You become you if you if 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 at, if you're at your inside sales department desk, you have the names and phone numbers of all of the top restaurants and who the yes. managers are, so you can pick up the phone and get reservations. Okay, you know what? You, you're thinking about going out for your birthday. Tell me something. What were you thinking about? Well, you know, we're going to go out to eat. Any ideas? Do you need help making reservations? Every yeah. restaurant manager wants a relationship with the limousine company. Okay. And if he asks you once a year for a comp, fine. Then tell him to comp you a gift certificate. Okay. Yeah. You can trade out stuff all you want because as long as he's not paying cash and he, he, he wants to be able to reciprocate. I'm going to tell you a true story. Shelton Corals, Sheldon Corals played for the Tampa Bay, uh, uh, the football team, the Tampa Buccaneers. Bay Buccaneers. Okay. So I was doing, this is how crazy we were on networking. We put a limousine in every parade. I didn't care where the parade was. We put a limousine in the parade and we threw out uh, like candy and everything. All right. Down there, they have something called Gasparilla. So I was I was driving a parade, a parade limousine in the parade, and Sheldon Corals was the grand marshal, and I never met him. He came up to me and he said, "You know, kind of need some help." I said, "Sure, what do you need?" He said, "It's my wife's birthday next week. I want to take her out on a Saturday night." Wait a minute, this guy is a Bucks player. He can get it anywhere. I'm like, no problem. Where are you thinking you want to go? We're thinking we want to go to Burns Steakhouse, but I don't want to make the reservations in my name. Because if I do, everybody will know that I'm going there. No problem. Piece of cake. I'll take care of the whole thing. What time do you want to get picked up? Here's my business card. Text me your home address. We'll t I'll take care of everything. I said I said to him, what does what your wife like to drink? Tell me what she liked to drink. We had her in a six-passenger limousine. We, we cleared everything with him first. Six-passenger limousine. She had her favorite wine in the limousine. There were a dozen roses in the limousine, okay? At Burns Steakhouse, they were escorted to a private table that was reserved for them. This guy told everybody in the Bucks how I took care of them. Next thing you know, I'm getting text messages from every Bucks player saying, you know, I didn't know that you made anonymous reservations. And I'm like, of course. I mean, we did a lot of that for, for all of the teams. And that's how we basically, anybody that was a local celebrity or a sports person, they don't want to make... They don't want to make, hey, Tom Brady's coming over to the restaurant. They, that's how we took care of them. What, what a brilliant idea. I've never heard the knowing the, the managers at like where I live in Orange County, 
you know, we have uh, Mastro's here, Javier's, um, Absolutely. really upscale spots. Yeah, I've never thought about that. Yeah, know the managers there, right? You walk in the door during the week. But, okay, picture this now. Black shoe, gold tie, black Cadillac, Escalade. And I walk in uh, in, in the early evening during the middle of the week to a specific restaurant. You say, listen, I've got a, a very important client who's asking me to scope out restaurants for them. Could I please have the business card of the general manager? Here's my business card. My name is Ken Lucci. We take care of the New York Yankees. We also take care of the Tampa Bay Rays. And I and typically I will do advance work if somebody wants us to make reservations for them. There is not one general manager that wouldn't answer my calls. They all want a relationship with limousine company. Now keep in mind, you have to give to get. If you're not prepared sure. to do that, then stay home. Okay. Yeah. But the you know, there are plenty of things like the birthday packages. You can find out places online to buy gift certificates at less than face value. Yes. Okay. But you 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 buy the best restaurants and you the biggest piece of this is to have the pull to be able to pick up the phone and get a reservation when a person yes. can't. You don't do it with 20 restaurants. You do it with the best five in town. They're always doing charity events. Always. The yeah. restaurants, restaurants promote themselves the same way. So I, I remember distinctly, you know, 25 wealthiest zip codes, check the business journal to find out who are the wealthiest local people in the area, who's yeah. the wealth, who is the most successful residential realtor, okay? When we got into the Sprinter business, we were the first people in Tampa to have a Sprinter. We actually in, went to the, low, the the most high end down there was Southersby, Southersby Real Estate. We went and during the day, right on Tuesday morning, I drove the realtors on their open house tour. Okay, at every single house, there's a bevy of women realtors, and I'm giving out my business card saying, "Look in the back of this limousine." It was a Sprinter limo. It was before. It was when they were really, really, you know brand new yeah we yeah had, we had coffee service inside and all it was was high-end networking okay yeah. that's all it was you know who the most successful realtors are trust me they know who all of the most successful people are who are moving into the area so we did a lot of networking at chamber meetings we went to there was an office managers association wedding networking groups I was a member of Business Networking International. We tried a yeah. couple of those. Um, we were members of Meeting Planners International. And we we literally would sponsor every charity event, something. Yeah. If, as long as there was 100 participants or more. Okay. And sometimes we would just set up at the charity event. Okay. If it was, if it was like a charity walk. We would set up, as I said, we would set up a spring water station. Why do I care? I'm paying a chauffeur, you know, let's just say I'm paying 25 bucks an hour to represent the company. The chauffeurs loved it. The chauffeurs, and that's kind of how we got them engaged in helping us get new clients. Um, so let's talk about the mistakes I made. Yeah. I was not big on creating relationships with our local competitors. I was not. I, I, I think looking back on that, that was one of my major mistakes. Um, I think that's probably common. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I, I get it. You can't be friendly with people that don't have a good attitude and they're not positive. Sure. But I remember the local limousine association. There's a guy named Dave Shaw who's very, very well known in the industry. I, sh I, I should have been less vocal and more participatory in the local networking to learn who the good guys were because yeah. by the way the good guys will always tell you who the bad guys are too yeah. so i also when i bought both companies i shut off all the inbound affiliate work and i'm not going to tell you who but the reasoning was because there was a huge company that owed me money and i could not get the president of the company on the phone. 
And yeah. this was an anathema to me. I could pick up the phone and get the president of any company on the phone, but I couldn't get this guy on the phone. And I remember my consultant at the time, Tom Mazza, said, they're the biggest network sending $10,000 a month to you. I said, you know something? I don't care. They don't pay their bills. Yeah. But I, I shut it all off. The mistake I made was, this was back before Zoom. If I was in business today, I would, and I was somebody who wanted to do inbound affiliate work, and there's really, really good reasons to do it. First and foremost, if you buy a brand new SUV, there's no way that you've got $150,000 to $180,000 a year. That's what the uh, one SUV should generate as hmm. soon as you take ownership of that new SUV. So the affiliate work is good fill-in work. Yeah. There's only, there's only one key to affiliate work. You've got to do business with people that are going to get you a credit card. So yeah. if I, so the mistake I made was I wholesale shut off affiliate work. The, what I would do if I was, was looking to grow the business today is I would set up Zoom calls. I would try to find who the affiliate managers are by going to the chauffeur driven magazine, the back yes. of it, Affiliate Central. But I would only do business with people who would get on a Zoom call with me and say, Mark, these are my terms. This is what I would like to be paid and I need to be paid by credit card. I would absolutely not do business with anybody who would not meet with me at a show or get on a Zoom call with me. And totally they, agree. I see that a lot in this 100%. industry. Like you know, people, they don't put their face anywhere. A lot no. of times they don't like their name being online anywhere. Right. I, you know, and that just makes you think, oh, well, w why is that the case? You know, they, they don't, they don't well, want to be. The, here's the, here is the key as far as affiliate work is concerned. If you're overwhelmed with work and you can't fit in another one or two trips or three trips a day, then don't do affiliate because chances are they're going to call you the night before or the morning of. Yeah. But the key is, if you're in growth mode, especially if you're growing in an area where you were sedan and SUV guy, but now you just bought a Sprinter, Yeah, I would be letting every single person know I had a Sprinter. If I was sedan SUVs and Sprinters, and now I just got into minis, I would let every network know that I had minis. Um, was was on the phone um, with Tammy Rudder from Commonwealth way back, uh, probably four months ago. Um, I've got an article that I proposed for CD Magazine. She was saying to me, we have literally had to reinvent the world and rebuild our networks after the, after the pandemic. And I said, you know, would you now take a smaller operator? She said, Ken, as long as their insurance is good and they present well, okay, we would certainly want to work with them and talk to them. And she said, I want to meet with them face to face, meaning by Zoom. I want to yeah. know who these people are. The affiliate, the affiliate relationship helps you lower your cost of goods. So if I have an SUV and my insurance is nine thousand dollars a year, well, you know, you do the division. It costs me X amount of dollars a month. If I can add three or four affiliate trips or four or five affiliate trips. I've now paid, I help pay for my insurance policy. It lowers yeah. my That fixed cost, cost right? That you right. have no matter what. Yeah, right. so the higher the but volume, the, yeah, the lower right. percentage it the, is. The key is to be, you want the affiliates to treat you like a true partner, okay? Yes. I mean, I was at the Chauffeur Driven Show and I'm watching, there's a, a guy I respect a lot in the Boston market. And I said, to him, what are you doing? He said, I'm meeting with all my partners. I said, I didn't know you had any business partners. He said, no, no, I'm meeting with all my affiliates, Ken. And, and I think that that's the key. I would avoid taking any trips, the last minute ones where you don't know who they are. Yeah. Your friends don't do business with them, right? Your friends, the, the other thing I would say to every everybody who wants to do affiliate business is to ask the network or the affiliate company who wants to send you farm in work, who else do they use around the country for yes. references? Okay. You got it. There's a lot, there's a lot of scammers out there with, you know, with a website and a credit card that, that they're going to run the credit. You're going to run the credit card after you do the trip. 
or before you do the trip and it's going to be a scan do business with people that are that are visible yes do business with people that advertise in affiliate central in in show for driven magazine so yes i also didn't manage the financial performance of the business i never really looked at i never looked at my monthly financials looking back and seeing looking at the financials that i look at on a daily basis now I really wish that I managed my company the way I teach operators to manage now. When I wanted to buy a piece of equipment, I just bought it because I wanted it, because maybe my comp competitor had one. I didn't price out my pricing structure based on knowing this is what the fleet payment is, this is what the insurance payment is. And it's funny, today we have a course that does all that. But I, yeah. when I look at these, these were major mistakes. I was a top line growth operator. I was all about capturing market share. I can tell with all those marketing ideas. I mean, right. you know. But <laughs> and the fun and the funniest thing is when we did those packages, we would price out what our gross margin was. I was buying hundred dollar gift certificates from restaurants for fifty bucks. Okay. Now, yeah, I mean some of That's them a had deal. <laughs> Right. Some of them had restrictions on them, but most sure. didn't because I had relationships with the management. OK, but some of them would be, you know, it's it's, you know, every night, Monday or Sunday through Thursday night. You, you know, what's your slowest time? OK, um, uh, just I, something real quick on that, because uh, I've. You know, I read this book, Hundred Million Dollar Offers, because a lot of my clients were asking me about Facebook and Instagram and you've got like. A um, thousand times more knowledge of me about marketing offline. Like I, I didn't know about any of these things. Just old style stuff, right? Yeah, but I was always looking that you need an offer on Facebook percent. or Instagram because people are just scrolling through. It's right. different than search ads, right? Intuitively, you, you know when someone's on Google search, they're looking for the service. Right. I mean, you can still have an offer, right? And right. it wouldn't hurt. But right. on Facebook and Instagram, you need an offer and man, what a great idea contacting a local venue and, you know, maybe setting up, you buy some gift certificates and maybe you do a whole like night out thing, including dinner or, you know, that's an example of an Absolutely. offer. And, and I he, never even thought of that. <laughs> we, we would always, this is one of the things that would drive my reservation is crazy. I would listen to them talk to a new client. And we used to make a big deal and say to the client, we, we would like to open, have you open an account with us. What does yeah. that mean? We're going to keep your credit card on file. So, and we're going to be able to give you preferred rates. If you, if you're, if you go to and from the airport more than six times a year, you're a preferred customer to me. Because when I look at the value of that six round trips, you know, that's, that's probably 1500 bucks. That's yeah. good enough for me. So I would ask them, what is the month of your birthday? I don't want to know your day, birthday. Well, what's your birthday month? And what's your anniversary month? Because we want to send you, we have packages. And if you're looking for ideas, we have great packages. And trust me, we used to, again, we used to A-B test things. After a while, people that never used us would call and say, you know, my neighbor told me that you got them into Burns Steakhouse on their birthday. It's sold out. Can you get me into Burns Steakhouse? And and the reservation staff would say, you know what, we have to call the back line and we have to see if we can we can use one of our reservations. We made a big deal out of it. And sure. then the same thing with Eddie V's and Ocean Prime and all of them. We and and listen, if a GM said to me, Listen, my boss is coming into town from Chicago, would you pick him up at the airport? I'm like, No problem, just shoot yeah. me a gift certificate. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, you know, the it doesn't, if it, it, you know what it is for the owner? It's opportunity cost to the owner. Okay. Yeah. It, and here's the very key if the value of the client you're creating is going to be 10x, 20x, 30x more than the offer, more than your, 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 your discount, or more yeah. than your concession, then do it. Yeah. I mean, we people used to think I advertise. I spent thousands of dollars on radio advertising. I didn't spend thousands of dollars on radio advertising. I had a relationship with the radio station where the head personality of the morning show 
needed occasional chauffeur transportation. I'd give yeah. him 50% off if he mentioned me on the radio. Next thing you know, he's having me come on the radio with him to tell <laughs> stories. It was, a, it was amazing. When I look back at what I miss about it, I miss the networking. I miss the fact that, I mean, back in the day, I probably had 5,000 contacts in my in my cell phone. Oh, I believe it. It seemed like okay. you knew everyone. And, and that's power in itself, you know? But you have to you keep in go mind, out. if no one knows who you are, or your Black Escalade looks like everybody else's Black yeah. Escalade, you're not building a brand. Yes. Okay? I mean, this we are in a discretionary service. It's hospitality-based. Naturally, you should try to get as close as possible to the other hospitality-based services. I'll give you a, a perfect tip. No, every single restaurant in your region that has a private dining room, put it on your website as a downloadable list. No, every single place that you can do team building events, create a list. Put it on your website be behind a contact form. You walk into a restaurant during the day when they're not busy and say, listen, I don't mean to bother you, but I've got a business group that's thinking about doing a private luncheon. I can make no guarantees. They're sending me around to a bunch of places. It's their choice. But yeah. could you please tell me how many people sit? can you accommodate? Okay, what are you going to learn? You're going to learn who the salesperson is because they all have a salesperson. Okay, yes. you're going to learn who the general manager is. I was on a first name basis with the GM of the Palm. Okay, when the Palm was a big thing, and yeah. every restaurant when they're opening up, that you're also going to find that restaurateurs normally don't own just one restaurant; they they own a bunch. So when they were opening up a new concept, they would call and say, "Ken, I, I would you like to come to the opening? Put a car out front." I said, I'm going to do you one better. I need 20 slots or I need 10 slots or I need five slots. And I would have emails sent to my best clients. Okay. Yeah. And the key is simple. You, again, you have to make a simple short list of who you think you're going to use your services and yes. you have to go where they go. And it wasn't that I was a magnanimous individual. It was more, you know, it was, who do I need to know? And how can I help that person succeed? Exactly. Okay. That's it right there. Right. Now, I would literally say to the people, that restaurants that had private dining rooms, we are going to give this list to every executive assistant for the companies we do business with. So when we would do lunch and learns, yeah. uh, we, would, we would say to the executive assistants, have you tried any of these? By the way, they have a private room. The general manager's name is so-and-so. Tell yeah. them we sent you. So yeah. you become the catalyst for networking, you know, and, and it's it's a misnomer that you have to have a bubbly personality. There were days where you wouldn't even want me in your house, never mind, because <laughs> I was a grumpy bastard. Yeah, and I think but, a lot of people probably think that, and that prevents them from, you know, taking that first step. Listen, you're already driving the biggest, the best calling card known to man, okay? You're already, if you're dressed to impress, 85% is what you look like showing up. And then you yeah. need a decent opening line and you need to answer yourself a question. You need to answer this question. How can I help that person succeed? Okay. So every new general, every restaurant GM, he's opening up a new restaurant. You think he wants the president of every company to know that he's open for business lunches? Of course he does. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, this is what gets me. Branding, building a brand is is only as difficult as you make it. If 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 you're not going to go out and you're not going to present yourself and your brand several times a day, X times a week, who's going to do it? Yeah. Okay. And I mean, that's, I think our industry is such that people have lost the, they don't understand People hire us because of the hospitality experience. Yes. We, ma we mastered that. I'm going to tell you right now, any of my competitors can say, <laughs> they can probably say a lot of things about me. None of them can say that we did not nail the customer experience. We nailed it. We, 
the 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 look of the vehicle, the look of the chauffeur. I mean, the the we took my book is basically a mirror of the Ritz Carlton book. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. By the way, I do have a second edition coming out of that book, and it's going to be cut way down into smaller chunks. Um, nice. But I I think that people forget how much akin we are to hospitality. I mean, yeah. people said to me two weeks ago, somebody said, well, I don't get any business from a, that business hotel. Really? That business hotel is in an office park where three of the largest employers in your area are, and they have an executive business lunch. Where do you think the executives and the managers go to lunch in that office park? You need to know that general manager. Well, he's going to ask me for free stuff. Well, you've got to temper it, okay? You've yeah, got to yeah. temper it. You, if you don't feel like you want to give him something, say, listen, I don't mind picking you up from the airport, but I really do need a gift certificate. I need something in kind. I would yeah. rather barter all day long than pay a credit card bill, okay? Yeah, totally. I, totally. Totally. Now, so you have to look at the businesses that we have in common. In the wedding space, it's the wedding caterer. It's the highest end wedding photographers. It's the tuxedo shops. It's the yeah. highest end florist. Okay. You don't need to be friends with every wedding planner. You just need to figure out the best wedding planners in your market because 20% of the wedding planners do 80% of the big weddings. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. In every only. industry, right? <laughs> every okay. industry is like that. Yes. You're going to find out of every restaurant in the region, there are the top 20 places for business lunches. That's where you need to know those people. You need to know where the private dining rooms are. And yes. seriously, think about what you could do with that. You put it behind you on your website. So somebody's looking at, Restaurants with private dining rooms. Okay, I'm not a digital expert, but I can tell you, you can get any web guy to figure out how that to make a downloadable list on your website. Put yeah. it on social media. Yes. Put it put it on social media. So, you know, it's. I think that we make a huge mistake as an industry that a lot of companies rely, they rely heavily, like when I say heavily, on a lot of inbound work. I want you to do inbound work while you're building your book of business. The easiest businesses for me to sell are the top three brands in the market. Okay. Not, not because Ken is involved in every sale as the owner, but because people know the name ambassador limousine. People know the brand. They, the brand is now being exposed. You're in the top, you're in the top positions on Google page one. And you're, when I look at your customer list, I know because I researched the demographics when we put companies up for sale. Yeah. I know that you're doing business with some of the largest law firms, doctors, and um, and largest corporations in your area. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I I miss that side of the business. I don't I don't miss the. No, I well, you were good at it, right? Uh, good at the networking piece. Good at the outbound and outreach. And a lot of companies I work with, I don't think many of them do what you're doing. And maybe one of those reasons is they just think, oh, I'm not that type of person. I'm not that, you know, I'm not outgoing, bubbly or, or whatever it might be. Like you said, you don't have to be show up, look good, you know, show up. In you, a have to have a, you have to have a good opening line, 30 second elevator pitch. You yeah. have to be able to answer the question, what do you do in a very intelligent way? But more importantly, you have to be conversational. Say, tell me something. What do you do? And tell tell me, you know, when you talk to a restaurant and they've got a private private room, tell me something. How can I help you with that? I mean, we have yes. a lot of corporate. What can I do for you? What you I, what can I do for you? I don't care if yes. you have one corporate client. Let the corporate client know that they have a private restaurant, a private dining room. I yeah. mean, so I, I think that you need a good opening line, you need a good 30 second pitch. I'm Ken the Limo guy. No, I'm not Ken. The, my name is Ken Lucci. I'm president of the Ambassador Limousine. We provide chauffeur transportation and group transportation services. One of the biggest things we do is airport service to and from the airport. Anytime you're going out of town, as soon as you buy airplane tickets, 
call our office and we'll drive you to the airport. You don't want to leave your car at that airport. Boom. And, and you can say just like that. You got to practice saying it 50 times, but right. eventually you'll get it down. Right. Not the limo guy. You know, yes. it's nice that you, it would be nice for you to have a two minute presentation to be able to think, okay, what does this executive assistant need to know about what I do? We specialize in in early morning and late night. We will never leave your boss at the airport. We will never leave your employees stranded. We answer our phones 24 hours a day, seven days a week. By the way, we can provide transportation anywhere you want in the nation. One secured phone call with one credit card. You don't have to send your credit card to people you don't know. We will handle everything. In so what does the person that you're talking to, what do they need to know? They don't need to know about your 2023 Escalade, okay? They, I don't yeah. I hate to tell you, but it's nice for you to show off equipment. It's nice for you. I mean, one example I always use is I had a limo bus, and one of my competitors said to me, don't bring that to tape tech data. They won't use it. So at the next Lunch and Learn, I brought an executive coach, and then I brought the limo bus. And yeah. I said, guys, I, I said, ladies, I want you to look at this. This is very conversational. This is not a party bus. There's no stripper pole. This is very conversational. There are two beverage service areas. And this is when you want to do corporate entertaining and you want to have conversations while you're on your way to and from. Next thing you know, we're getting, hey, we, we want that conversational vehicle. We want that vehicle. Yeah. So, you know, we've got great tools. We just don't use them. Okay. Yeah. We just don't. And I think that, you know, building your local business, the way I always tell people is very simple. You don't think you have downtime, but I tell you, you've got some downtime. I know your reservation is that downtime because I stand in back of them and I count the number of reservations they do in a in an hour. And I this is what they're doing. They're taking a reservation and then they're playing on their cell phone. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Totally. Figure out what you can do so that you can utilize their downtime, utilize your chauffeur's downtime. I would give my chauffeurs a list of lawyers' offices, and the first, we would do a drop-off. I would have a sealed letter to the, to the person in charge, and it was very simple. Our chauffeurs are W-2 employees. They all have confidentiality, non-disclosure agreements. We can also provide you with vehicles that have partitions. Yeah. That was it. And and it just didn't require. And the chauffeurs, listen, I wasn't, you know, these guys were not road scholars. They didn't get, have to deliver the pitch if they didn't want to. I would just say, here, here's your list. Drop off this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Totally. And it, that was it, you know, and we don't do enough of that stuff. I mean, I love what you do. I think you. I've seen your stuff. I see how effective your ROI is. I see how you do your PPC. But these operators need to balance this. They also need to give yes. you something to work to work with. Okay. So I, I just think that from a local networking perspective, if you're not in your community and you don't know who the most important business people are and you don't know who the biggest employers are, you're really not doing your job. You're not yeah. really as the business owner, no one can present the way you present. No totally. one can. Totally. You know? And with on, and with online leads, it's it's look, it's yeah, you you get a mix, right? You do. Yeah. There's some gold in there, but it's you know when they're coming to you, you can't be as choosy. When you're going to them, it's like right. who are my dream 100 clients, or you know right. who are the people I want to work with, and and well, listen, we approached it many different ways. I mean, we. We we absolutely love to do high touch clients. We love to be the company that, you know, uh, uh, Julie Weintraub that owned Gold and Diamond Source would say, Ken, you 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 are the person. Your company is that you are the high touch limousine company. Anybody that wants top shelf service, and it was true. I mean, we, we actually would make a deal with jewelry stores to say, if you've got something that you want delivered. We'll give you, a, we'll do white glove delivery for you. All our chauffeurs are W 2 and they're insured. Some of them would want me to do it, but we made, we made friends with the biggest and best independently owned jewelry stores because those are the people 
who are going to the charity events. Those are the people yes. that know the other luxury dealers, uh, the other luxury goods uh, companies, and as well. You know, the key it, the key is to be part of your community, and yes. and again to be the person they think about. And when I say top three brands, it's simple. In the 25 wealthy zip codes, if I walk those neighborhoods, would they know your brand? That's being one of the top three brands in your market. If I went to the 100 largest employers, would most of them know your name? I mean, we won Tampa Bay's best chauffeur transportation company five years in a row, and it was voted by the Business Journal. The I, I yeah. believe a lot of you were known. Every that everyone knew you, and, and so yeah, and that's know. hey. Um, what are the, you mentioned you have three courses coming out. Sorry, I've, I've got an appointment coming up around 3.30. No, no, no Still have to prepare for, but yep. no, t tell me again. Um, you've got some courses coming out on financials, right? We what have are the, the, ones? The, the first course we've got coming out is very simple. It's what every limousine owner should know about running their business by financial statements. It's how to set them up, how to read them, what to look for, what to look for to make sure you don't get into trouble. The second one we have is knowing your costs in order to price profitably. We've talked about this. You need to be priced to market, mostly in sedans and, and SUVs to get to and from the airport. If you're one of the only minibus companies out there, you don't need to be low priced. You need to price based on your cost. So that's the second one. The third one will be out later on the year. It's how to do dynamic budgeting because you have to have your financial statements in order to do dynamic budgeting. And yes. It, the only thing you don't know in your financial statements every single month is how much revenue is coming in. You know how much, if, if you're setting up your financials right, you know as a percentage of income what you're paying your chauffeurs, what your fuel cost is, et cetera, et cetera. So we're trying to get more people educated that way. I'm waiting for my website guy to get us up and running and make sure that the Teachables platform is easy to use. But that, that's what we've got coming up. Nice. Awesome. Cool. Well, hey, we'll do this again soon, hopefully. Uh, and by the way, anyone watching, if you ever have any suggestions of what you'd like Ken to you know, go over, the guy, you're a wealth of information, obviously. You've been there, done that. But more importantly, you've worked with so many companies and, and helped them sold their businesses so you know what buyers are looking for. When? And I see best practices. Oh. I see the best practices across the board. I mean, we were great on networking. I work with other people that are absolutely fantastic on the wedding space. I have other people that are unbelievable on developing corporate relationships in their own areas. And to me, I believe a rising tide lifts all boats. I think the industry is in a good place. I think we need to continue to rebuild build back capacity. We yeah. don't need to go down on our prices. We don't need to lower our prices. We need to manage our costs. And we need to just keep growing our business in a profitable manner. So I'm I'm happy to help out. As I said, this is uh th this is one of my the fun things I do in, during the day with you. So yeah. This was a blast, Ken. Hey, thanks again. And uh yeah, I'll see you next time. Okay. Sounds good. I hope I added value. Have a great night. All right, you too.